Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. This week's episode of Just Asia covers International Women's Day, March 8th. The day is observed every year to reflect on women's struggle to achieve their rights and to reaffirm their resolve for equality. In the words of UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, let us devote solid funding, courageous advocacy, and unbending political will to achieving gender equality around the world. There is no greater investment in our common future. This year's theme is Planet 5050 by 2030, Step It Up for Gender Equality. The idea is to work towards achieving gender equality in various areas by 2030 and meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. Key areas include making sure all girls and boys complete free equality primary education by 2030 and ending all forms of violence and discrimination against girls and women everywhere. Now, for the look of the situation of women in Asia. These are the headlines. Pakistan, second worst country for women. Gender inequality and discrimination against women in Indonesia. Progress needed in practice, not just on paper for Nepali women. Increased women's participation in Burma's new government and parliament. Controversy over boy AIDS rumors in Sri Lanka. Thai human rights lawyer harassed for doing her job. Five urgent appeals cases highlighting collapse of rule of law. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I am Julia Roblando. Beginning with Pakistan, the second most dangerous country in the world for women after Yemen, Pakistani women have fought a long battle to win the rights guaranteed under their constitution, and yet they are still relegated to being second-class citizens. Many of Pakistan's cultural and religious practices pose a huge threat to women, particularly child and forced marriage, acid attacks, honor killing and denial of education. According to statistics, more than 2,000 cases of honor killing were reported in 2014, with many cases going unreported. The unimaginable atrocities meted out this women are never prosecuted by the state. Violence against women perpetuates precisely due to the lack of action taken against perpetrators and the denial of redress to victims. Pakistan's literacy rate is dismissal. Almost 16 million girls between the ages of 6 and 11 are currently out of school. Pakistan will thus need more than law to elevate the status of women. Just Asia speaks to Bushra Khalik, Director at Women in Struggle for Empowerment, for more details. I uh, congratulate to all brave, brave women in Pakistan who are uh, struggling and fighting against the patriarchy. They are uh, struggling against uh, uh, religious fundamentalism and also uh, feudal mindset. Uh, still, the women in Pakistan are facing a lot of problems and uh, structural uh, barriers uh, in the way of uh, their development. Uh, still, huge number of girls are out of school. Uh, thousands of women are being killed by, uh, in the name of honor, and uh, they are uh, facing discrimination and domestic violence. Uh, Pakistan uh, is on the top uh, uh, when the question comes of, uh, uh, of the stillbirth in Pakistan. Uh, so we can imagine that uh, until or unless the women uh, in Pakistan are not uh, being the part uh, of uh, decision making levels, uh, they, uh, they still uh, face a lot of problems. And uh, particularly I would say that uh, uh, the Council of Islamic Ideology, uh, which uh, is uh, bent upon to uh, block every women uh, move uh, regarding the pro-women laws or any other uh, uh, steps for the emancipation of the women, uh, they are uh, uh, blocking the ways and uh, putting uh, barriers into that way. And uh, I say that uh, this, uh, constitu uh, this Council of Islamic Ideology must be abolished uh, because uh, in the presence of such kind of uh, uh, um, um, institutions, uh, women uh, will be uh, and women rights will be undermined. And uh, uh, still, uh, uh, there is a long way to uh, uh, to this journey, and 
I think uh, <clears throat> the women in Pakistan are uh, determined to uh, make their way. Celebrating International Women's Day in Indonesia, women activists express concern about impunity and lack of due process in Indonesia. Gathering in front of the presidential palace to join with the black demonstrations, participants called for gender equality in families before the law and in politics. Countless Indonesian women are still subjected to domestic violence and human rights violations particularly in plantation and mining areas. Women are also subjected to discrimination and violence in the name of religion, genital mutilation for instance, as decreed by the Ulama Council, Sharia law in Aceh province is also detrimental to women. To learn more, Just Asia speaks to Ms. Novia Seni Astriana, a women's rights activist from Sudut Kota advocating against discrimination. Ya, di hari uh, perempuan internasional ini, semoga di Indonesia tidak ada lagi kasus kekerasan terhadap perempuan, kekerasan seksual, di domestik, uh, dan juga perempuan masih banyak dapat kesempatan di ruang-ruang publik, di politik terutama, karena hari ini perempuan masih sangat minim, walaupun ada kuota 30%, tapi hari ini nyatanya perempuan-perempuan Indonesia masih banyak yang Uh, belum muncul ke permukaan. Lalu terutama untuk perempuan-perempuan yang rentan seperti perempuan-perempuan petani, perempuan-perempuan nelayan, hari ini pasti terus berjuang. Semoga di hari perempuan internasional ini mereka makin kuat untuk terus berjuang uh, mempertahankan hak-haknya. Nepal has a woman president, a woman speaker in parliament and a higher female literacy rate than ever before. The government even established a five-year national strategy and action plan on the elimination of gender-based violence and gender empowerment in 2012. There is a huge difference between putting plans and policies on paper, however, and putting them into action. Nepali women still have insufficient access to quality education basic health facilities and employment opportunities. There must be real progress in practice, not just in terms of paper plans and policies. The state apparatus and its institutions must be adequate and women-friendly. Otherwise, women are always going to be victimized in Nepal. In Burma, the new parliament has an increased number of women parliamentarians. The lower house has 43 women out of 433 representatives, which is 9.9%, while the upper house has 10.3%, with 23 women out of 224 representatives. This is double that of the previous parliament. Women ministers are also expected in the new government that will take up office in April. While Burma has seen some improvement in women's rights, it is still lacking a specific law protecting women from domestic violence. Under Burma's penal code, marital rape is not a criminal offense unless the wife is below 13 years. The controversial Population Control Health Care Bill, enacted in April 2015, requires mothers to have their children 36 months apart. This could undermine women's rights and religious freedom. Burmese society continues to view women as inferior gender, and women's clothing is considered a disgrace. For this reason, one woman was sentenced to six months imprisonment due to a Facebook post comparing Aung San Suu Kyi's skirt collar with that of the army's new uniform. Turning to Sri Lanka, hours before the dawn of International Women's Day, 
A school in the western city of Culiaputia was emptied of all but one pupil amid false rumors that the boy has AIDS. According to media reports, parents removed their children from the school last week despite the six-year-old having a certificate proving he does not have AIDS. Villagers have erected a sign warning people to avoid the school. The boy's mother filed a fundamental rights petition at the Supreme Court on March 1, seeking admission to a school, which is likely to come up for hearing next week. Many other schools had rejected the boy because his father's death had been wrongly attributed to AIDS. While Sri Lanka has a low prevalence of HIV, it also has a low awareness level of the disease. From Thailand, Just Asia reports on the case of Ms. Sirikan Charansari, a lawyer from the Thai Lawyers for Human Rights Group, who is facing criminal charges that could have her in prison for up to eight years. She has an expedited hearing this month in which the court will decide whether she needs to be remanded to pre-trial detention. The charges relate to her representation of pro-democracy student activists of the New Democracy Movement and are in a retaliation for refusing to hand over her client's personal belongings without a warrant and for pursuing a complaint against the police. In the words of Sirikan, under military rule, men and women are strangely equal now. Human rights defenders, men or women, have to stand firm in defending the rights of all races, faiths and genders. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly feature brings you five cases highlighting the extraordinary collapse of rule of law. In Kerala, India, five youngsters have been tortured and harassed at a police station for 10 hours. Although the five were later released on bail, a proper investigation has not been carried out. In the Philippines, four men have been arrested and tortured in Cavite. The victims were tied, beaten, and electrocuted. Also from the Philippines, we raised the continuing delay in the court hearing of Mary Vic Medina, a mother falsely charged of assaulting her own son. In Indonesia, a vicious attack was launched by several Indonesian law enforcement agencies against local residents who refused to cooperate with the government in its plan to build a new airport on Yogyakarta province. Lastly, in Sri Lanka, a father and daughter have been illegally arrested detained and falsely charged by the Kandi police. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.